So I got uh, two books. Thank you so much for to my patrons or patrons. I'm not sure how you say that. Patreons. Uh, so I got this book. I'm gonna cover later on, and now uh, we're gonna look at this book, "The Advancing Guitarist" by Mick Goodrick. I think a lot of people, a lot of you, uh, are aware of this book. It's been around since '87 uh, or something. So. A lot of people have used this book over the years and uh, still in print, so that gives you an idea of its uh, significance in the jazz guitar pedagogy tradition. So we're going to use this book. I'm just going to look at one chapter in the book. Uh, it's so much in here. You like each page could be an hour YouTube lesson, as it were. But uh, I'm just going to use this book look at the beginning here and so we're gonna look at one chapter here which he calls the realm of the electric ice skating rink those are actually his words it's a funny guy this Mick Goodrick character apparently so what he's talking about I guess is viewing the fretboard as a rink and you want to use the whole fretboard right not stay in one place and it's also the notes, I guess, is kind of a realm or the mode. So let's just get right into it. So the idea is to pr pick a mode and I'll, I picked D Dorian for this exercise. And then uh, we're going to explore the fretboard. So here's a D Dorian band. <laughs> So uh, you've learned all your positions. But it's really easy to get stuck in a position and we find our favorite areas. Even if you're a seasoned player, this kind of exercise is good for beginner players. I mean, beginner to jazz players as well as more advanced players because even if you're advanced and you're thinking, well, D Dorian, how it's pretty easy. We all have our favorite spots on the fretboard and it's not necessarily anything wrong with that, but we also need to kind of constantly improve ourselves, I think, in finding where our weak areas are. So this kind of practicing will help us do that. So now let's say this is a position here. <laughs> What I find with my students, for example, is that they learn that shape, but they don't know what their notes, what the notes are, right? So when they're playing, so what, for example, then all of a sudden it's E flat, they just shift. But they still don't know what the notes are. Well, they actually were playing D flat major, right? Which E flat Dorian is D flat major, so there's five flats, so. You know, that's a lot of, that's kind of a tricky key. So we need to know what the notes we play are. So we need to come up with an exercise to help us do that. And this book is excellent for that. So the first thing he does is suggest play on one string, which I think is also kind of a familiar thing to do. So you start with maybe the top string. Play the whole string. Okay, so that might seem like a very easy exercise, but even for me, like I'm not super used to this guitar because it's a uh, you know, every guitar is kind of different, so I'm not super 100% sure of what I'm doing up here. So I noticed that now, so this is good for me as well. Then you do the next string, and even the lowest string, even though that might seem silly again. But you want to 
be patient with it. You don't, it's easy to go back into your familiar stuff like, nah, I don't, I don't want to do this. I want to, you know, or have your favorite Dorian stuff as it were. But no, those are just finger habits. Those are licks. We're trying to get away from that with this exercise. So you do all the strings and you stay with it for a while and till you get uh, comfortable and uh, you want to be patient with it. You don't want to, and if you think it's silly, remember that, remember all the students that Mick Goodrick had, right? Like John Abercrombie, Mike Stern, Schofield. So if you think this book is silly, remember, think about that. That's good to keep that in mind. So the next thing he suggests is to play two notes per string. We all know the three notes per string idea, but two notes per string, which would give you this kind of position. If I play D Dorian. And back. It's, again, if for some of you that may seem like that's silly. Why would I play like that? I'm not going to play like that. So the idea is not, we're not learning a position. We're doing the opposite. We're breaking out of a position, right? So no, you're not going to play it like that, but you're actually exploring the fretboard. And what happens is that maybe you run into a problem. Like, wait, what are the next notes? And that's when you want to focus in and zoom in on that problem area until you figure it out and then you're uh, improving, right? So imagine you're playing so what? And I show this to my students too. They most of the time they can do that, no problem. Then I say, then I say do E flat. See, I, I was hesitating there, so. Because it's not as easy to just move this shape because the shape is weird. It's not as visual as this shape. Which we all probably practice so much that we it's internalized. And so it's a blessing and a curse that for us guitar players that we can move a shape easily, but it actually prevents us from learning the notes. I've talked about this before, but if, if you're a piano player, play D Dorian and play E flat Dorian, it's an entirely new fingering, which actually, actually forces the piano player to learn the notes. But it's, there's this risk for us guitar players that we don't actually learn the note. Okay, so that was two notes per string. Three notes per string we all know and love, right? So... And of course you want to start on other places, but if I start from the root, so you get this. You can get that kind of Pat Metheny run uh, type. Right, which is kind of neat. Uh, so that's that, and that's pretty self-explanatory. Now, four notes per string. Now it gets a little bit more uh, advanced. So I'm not gonna do four notes per string, even though I have four fingers like that, even though you could do that. That's not for me. I know there may be some heavy metal players do that, and I think Alan Holdsworth probably is capable of doing that kind of stuff. That's not for me because I'm just not created to play that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to play four notes per string. And instead of starting here, I'm going to start on the lowest note on my instrument and try to play this way, right? So again, it's the ice skating rink where you try to get across the rink from here to here without necessarily being in any position. 
So this is a really excellent way to do that. So if I play four notes per string, I need to come up with a fingering solution. And the first thing we could do is to slide the first note of each four note grouping. Okay, so if I do that, I'll get something like this, or I'll get this. Starting on the lowest note is E, I guess, but the lowest fingering note would be F. Again, you think of a piano player or a horn player, they would practice like that. They would play the lowest note on that they can on their instrument and then work the whole register. So, uh, yeah, that's a, also notice the difference between a slide and the glissando. So you don't necessarily want to do a trying to be consistent so it sounds like you're just playing a scale slide just means you're shifting like that but not necessarily making that sound right so there's a difference there uh, so I'll just uh, play a little bit like that can do E flat minor start on the same notes all of a sudden it's gonna be tricky right ah. so you're not helped by a, a, a fingering position so you have to know what notes you're playing right so Okay, so next uh, fingering solution were to be slide the fourth finger instead. Ah. And then there's another thing you can do is to uh, slide every time there's a half step. to get from there to here right in different ways and this is really excellent so uh, that was that so I hope that gave you some ideas of how to uh, breaking out of scalar positions and how to improve your uh, fretboard knowledge right so one thing you can do that he recommends in, in the book if you're kind of new to practicing this way is to uh, because it's easy to get overwhelmed by all the, imagining all the scales and all the keys. It's kind of a daunting thing. So you, you write down the scales that you want to practice, the modes, and on little uh, pieces of paper, and you put them in a, a, a bowl or something, and you also write down scales, and then you just pick randomly one, and you practice that for that day. So let's say you pick A flat mixolydian. Then you do all these exercises that I just did, just over A flat mixolydian for that day. And then gradually you move on. So you don't try to do all scales in, you know, in uh, every key at once, because that would be impossible. So uh, again, thank you to uh, my supporters for enabling me to purchase these books. I'll probably cover this book some more, even though I'm not going to cover all of it because I want you to get the book, right? So I'm just kind of scratching the surface as usual. And then also I'm going to cover this amazing book also by Mick Goodrick and by this amazing, oh, sorry, there it is, this amazing other guitar teacher player, Tim Miller. So check it out and I shall see you next time.